I gave and sent the, I wrote down, I recorded one night. Um, ever, literally, we logged every single thing that was happening as an illustration of a typical Saturday <laughs> night in <laughs> Clarendon Mansions. And they said, oh, that must have been terrible. I can see that must have been a really bad night. No, that's, that's every night. <laughs> in Brighton, it's a typical summer Friday night out. I want to show you East Street, which lies by the pavilion and Brighton Town Hall. Residents here are suffering from its nighttime economy. I'm Jason Kitkat, Green City Councillor for Regency Ward, which covers the city centre area. Since the Licensing Act was changed in 2005, residents in my ward have been suffering from increased noise, crime and antisocial behaviour. Let's have a look at how it's affecting the residents of East Street. Got Ku Club, Madame yeah. Geisha, and Lola Lo. Hmm. Um, the noise from those premises just uh, comes out from fire exit doors. Um, the staff come out of the fire exit doors at intervals right. um, and then the noise just bounces around and we hear it as clearly and, and sometimes louder up here than it is at street level. So how, where do you go in the hallway? Near the front um, door? Or? Yeah, near the front door over here. <coughs> Right. So that corner yeah. has lots of bins for um, at least five clubs and um, at intervals during the night um, they come out with um, bottles that they've collected and they literally throw them into those bins and quite a crash every time that's kind of emptied. Mm. Um, again, talking to the managers has helped um, them realise that uh, what a pain that is for us. And, and there are problems with collections in the morning, aren't there? there? Um, the waste collectors come um, at all hours. They've, they've all been told um, not to come before eight. In fact, um, they can arrive as early as six, half five sometimes. Um, and the whole lot of those huge big bins yeah. get tipped out in one go. Mm. But every one of these is, is an occasional noise, but you add it all none, together. You add it all together, it makes life quite difficult. Mm. And is it comfortable, the Lilo? Um it's okay if you stay in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> you you formed a residence association fairly recently, didn't you? Well when was that and why? Um, it would be about um, nine months ago now. Okay. Um, and it was just because of the increasing levels of noise. Quite a lot of the people that we talked to in the block uh, had the same issues, but never actually came out and said anything about it. It's in 1870, so I think in 140 years, there's a precedent established for people living on East Street. Mm. Um, and the licensing laws, the 24-hour laws, have been around for a few years, and the huge detrimental impact they've had on people's lives. The window that faces north onto the block room and all the other clubs in. Right, okay. Yeah, and that is some serious glassware you've got there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this three, is three panes. Three panes, this is what they call tertiary acoustic. Right. And we can't actually open it, so you couldn't have it everywhere. Right. But we have another window in this room, so it, it's So if there's safe, a fire, we can go we can up open with that one. Mm -hmm. You just have to lift it off. Because we found yeah. when we put just secondary glazing in the mm. whole flat, um, it just didn't, not, didn't make any difference. Occasionally we hear the loud uh, bit, which is bass from next door, yeah. which, uh, which really comes through. It's the people's voices which come through more. Mm. I mean, should we take a wander down East Street, yeah. have a look yeah. at the old yeah, favourite well, spots? Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah? Okay. <laughs> cool. okay. Right. So, okay. varsity. So, 
I just met the um, owners of uh, Varsity, their managers, and they'd informed me that they put in, put in for planning permission to put an acoustic ceiling right. that would have really helped the noise levels going travelling through the floor. Yeah. Now all of the first floor residents complain about the noise of the Varsity coming right. straight through the floor. Right. That that acoustic ceiling would have really helped them, but actually it was turned down because of a, 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 a because this is a listed building um, and um, the plan has got really precious about the building right got the the council the licensing panel whoever it is makes the rules don't actually necessarily realize the adverse impact of what they're doing fire doors or alternatively public toilets depending yes. on your point of view indeed <laughs> and here are the bins that um are some people's alarm clock? Yeah. Right. And so, so the, the the trucks come up here. The, they reverse, so they've got their reverse beepers going all the time. They're reversing down the street. Yeah. Um, and then they wheel these bins one at a time, and um, kind of five minutely intervals from whenever they start, there's an almighty shower of bottles. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, that's Cuckoo Club. Cuckoo Club fire exit doors that bang at regular intervals yeah. um, when the staff congregate out here and decide to talk all the way through the night. Yeah. So essentially you've got premises which aren't designed. It's a cinema. Um, it's now been used as nightclubs. It wasn't built for that. It doesn't mm. really have the facilities. So it's starting to warm up now, isn't it? Beginning to. Yeah. yeah. The problems we have with Madame Geisha a lot is the noise caused by the people standing out here, congregating around yeah. when they have a queue or people coming out to smoke or something like that. Um, we, you get, as it gets more popular, you get more people in the road, then cars can't get past, so you have a queue of cars all beeping their horns trying to get past all the drunk people who don't care. The staff, the door staff are cooperative, yeah. they are nice and friendly, but yeah. they actually, they're not, they can't really do anything about it, or so they say. Right. Um, okay. You know, when, when I've complained, they've kind of made an effort that one time, but never, you know, the problem still stands and has done for a long time. This year, since last August, there have been 29 temporary event notices in this area. You can see how they're all lined up wall to wall. Yeah. And if this is a cumulative impact area, well, my definition of cumulative applies to premises all lined up side by side. So why keep issuing? We know why, because that's the law, which is a silly law as it stands. They just keep issuing the temporary event notices. They, because they're licensed premises, it means it suspends their current licensing um, conditions. So in fact, they can literally party day and night for days. Here is a new fast food joint which seemingly has opened without the proper permissions and caused much concern amongst businesses and residents in the area. They've completely taken advantage of the licensing panel. We knew they were doing that, which is why we objected. It's happened exactly as we said, but essentially the outcome is, if the residents object to it, if the residents police it, then they'll do something about it. Well, I'm not paid to be part of, of the council. Yeah. I just live here, so why don't I do my job and they do theirs? Yeah. It would be rather and fairer. How long, how, I wonder how long the nice shops will stay around when the burger bars and so on, yeah. the trouble that's caused, the damage but from the nightclubs at that end. I just worry about the long term impact on the shops and restaurants that are here. You know, we knew where we were buying into and when we moved in we knew there were nightclubs. But I think what's being forgotten here is that year on year it, the antisocial behaviour is getting worse and worse and the noise is getting louder and louder 
um, and uh, you know it, it is all um, steadily climbing to, 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 to the worst. You don't get 24 out 24 7 policing at this end of East Street when there's a 24 7 party going on because mm. somebody's issued a temporary event notice. Yeah. Um, actually typically what happens on a Friday Saturday is that the nightclubs kick out about uh, two o'clock half two and the police have disappeared just about that time and because there's a, a, a turnaround in their shift pattern so we've lost the police at just the critical time when actually that's when they're needed so you know by all means license them but then give us the infrastructure that goes with that give us the services that go with that at the moment it's mm. not happening for example the noise patrol we haven't called it for ages because the way that they are allowed to operate is they have to come into your own premises to listen you know i mean and we can't, can't tell where the noise is coming from they haven't got any powers to do anything outside yeah and where we live we can't tell where the noise no. is coming from unless we go anyway. out and check yeah so are we yeah. supposed to go out and do the policing i don't think so mm. <laughs> Tonight I started at 8 and I've got 6 officers at my disposal right. and 2 are up at East Street and covering Pavilion, right. 2 are at St James's Street right. and 2 are walking around relieving those two who then sort of do a little circuit, come here so it's not all too dull for them okay. and we get nice fresh faces doing nice fresh things. Okay, until what sort of time? Until uh, 4 in the morning. 4 in the morning, Or hopefully okay. sort of 3.30 so we can right. get, get de-kitted and ready to go by 4. Okay, because um, these residents here were just raising, one issue for them is that when people are being chucked out down at the southern end of East Street, they don't see much of an officer presence. There's almost always two officers here till three, four in the morning. Okay. Whenever I've worked it, there's always two down here at least. Okay. All right. It, it may be there's a lot of people there and you may not see us, but we okay. are there. In this area, seven clubs we just counted. Right. And it's such a narrow street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And within, I think, about 50 meters, you can walk yeah. into seven different clubs. Yeah. 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 It also illustrates the problem that we've had trying to say to licensing, you know, it's this premise that's making this noise. Well actually, you know, unless I talk to every individual here, yeah, I don't really know where they're going to go. Do I? Yeah. Just there into right. the Queen's Hotel. Right. Um, and they have those big metal trolleys full of linen yeah. uh, that they wheel out. Their deliveries come at kind of, uh, there's usually one about this time, there's also right. usually one about 6 a.m. On a corner. Right, and <laughs> and is there not a loading area around, around the corner there or something? Yes, there is. Right. So, um, yeah. well, I think that might. It's clear to me that the Licensing Act needs to be strengthened and Parliament needs to take urgent action. But there's still things that we can do here locally. The members of the Licensing Committee could take a much firmer line on any new applications they see coming into the committee. And we could also get a much stronger line on enforcement. We could get the police, all the bodies of the council, to act more firmly and more quickly to enforce any action that's out of line. We can work together here. We can't have the clubs kicking out when the police are no longer on the streets. Action is possible now through joint working. Let's work together to help the residents of East Street and the whole of Central Brighton. Thank you.